This morning is our All Together Now service, which of course means handing it over to our tame youth worker. Some say that they can remember a time when he was not chilled and laid back, and that he's been recently spotted at the promenade with a hacksaw. <laughs> All we know is he's called Ian. <laughs> Okay, so, quick question to start off with. What does the TARDIS have in common with an iceberg? Before you answer, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about it while I watch a video which also features an iceberg. When the Titanic set sail in 1912, it was thought to be practically unsinkable. This might explain why everyone on board was so badly off when disaster struck. Imagine if the crew had got together to discuss how ill-prepared they were. All right, gentlemen. As you know, we've got over 2,000 passengers on board the Titanic for this trip. And we're sailing into an area well known for its icebergs. So I thought it only prudent to go through a few safety archiacs. How did today's lifeboat drill go? It was cancelled, Captain Smith, as per your orders. Good work, Murdoch. Who needs a lifeboat drill when you're on a ship this size? <laughs> I mean, surely it's unsinkable, right? Well, you'd have thought so, sir. Hmm, best be on the safe side, though. Have you checked if there are enough lifeboats for everyone on board? Of course we have, sir. There aren't. We've only got 20 lifeboats, not nearly enough for all of our passengers. Is that wise? Don't really know, sir. Nobody's ever made a ship this big, so regulations don't really cover it. Oh, well, you know, regulations are regulations, even if there aren't any regulations. And uh, do we know how to use these lifeboats? No idea, sir. Most of us haven't had the necessary training. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll be fine anyway. Wireless operator, have we received any warnings of any icebergs in the area? Oh, yes, sir. We've had a number of warnings from other ships. Uh-huh. Don't suppose there's anything to worry about? Mm. Probably not, sir. Good. Who's on the lookout tonight? I am, sir. And have you got your binoculars? No, sir. Oh. Won't you need them when you're manning the searchlight? There isn't a searchlight, sir. Just testing, Stephen. This is all just precautionary stuff anyway. I've been at sea 40 years and I've never had a problem. We might as well increase the ship's speed to maximum. That way we'll arrive in New York earlier than expected. Oh, uh, who's the most experienced officer on the bridge? Um, you are, sir. I'm off to bed then. Murdoch, you're in charge. Don't worry about a thing. It's not as if the Titanic's going to sink. <laughs> right then. I think I deserve a nightcap. Ooh, anyone know where I can get any ice? Ah, I'm sure some will show up. Okay, so that's all. That's all. That's all true. Um, they thought the Titanic was unsinkable. They cancelled the lifeboat drill. They only had lifeboats for half of the passengers. Most of the crew hadn't been trained. They ignored warnings of icebergs. There was no searchlight. But what does the what do icebergs have in common with the TARDIS? Any ideas? A penguin could be correct. <laughs> the TARDIS probably has a penguin somewhere. But the is, to be fair. Right, wrong audience. What? What? I heard. I heard Roger shout out. They're bigger than they look. So this is what we call the tip of the iceberg. But that's actually how big an iceberg is in real life. The the bit that you can see is probably about what twenty percent of the entire iceberg and the TARDIS looks like a little blue box on the outside but on the inside it's massive and apparently the TARDIS has 14 bathrooms, a laboratory, a storeroom, a laundrette, a zoo, a cricket pavilion, a kitchen, a library, an art gallery, a walk-in wardrobe, a swimming pool, an observatory, an engine room, a sick bay, seven squash courts and a gym. <laughs> Bigger than you think. Um, but what I want to talk about today is, is God, and actually how God is bigger than you think, and that so are his promises. Now, in the Bible, 
God makes a lot of promises to us. Um, this is a verse from 2 Corinthians. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Now, to put that in simple terms, put your faith in God. Remember that he's in charge and he will look after you. Okay, remember that. Now, um, I want to introduce a few people who are new to Western Impact. Um, these guys are from Cape and Ray. If you'd like to come forward and say hello and give them a round of applause. Don't look so nervous. Okay, contestant number one. What's your name and where'd you come from? I, oh, I'm Brittany and I'm from the States. Whereabouts? I, California. <laughs> contestant number two. I'm Debbie and I'm from Switzerland. Is it cold in Switzerland these days? Welcome to Morecambe. <laughs> uh, I'm Taylor Ann, and I'm from Canada, in Toronto. Do you get really offended when people ask you whereabouts in America you're from? Um, not really. We have the same accent. So like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> anyway, right, so, um, you three guys are going to uh, help us with a little challenge, so I need three volunteers, small volunteers. Lauren? Benny. Come on then. And Esther as well. Come on. Okay. Uh, what I didn't tell you was there's a challenge, but you're going to be blindfolded while, blindfolded while you're doing it. So, I tried to find three scarves, but I found one of mine, one of Jill's, um, and a football sock. So, who's got the smallest head? <laughs> Do you, do you want to you take your glasses off? You won't need them for this challenge. Take your glasses off today. Spin around. Okay. All right. No, just once. Just once. Just once. Oh, word. What was it they say? Never work with. Tell she's a Hamilton. Can you say anything? No, good. Don't spin around too much because I'm not sure that's covered by the insurance. You see anything? No. Good. How many fingers? Good answer. <laughs> okay, right. What you're going to do? We're going to do a bit of an obstacle course. Okay, Esther, try not to injure yourself too soon in the process. Right, I need three human uh, traffic cones. Um, and Hamilton, good. Good for just, just sort of here will do. John, are you like a good traffic cone? Um, oh, you have a, you, you're from Cape Henry as well. You haven't introduced yourself. What's your name? Okay. Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos. And where are you from? Spain. Ooh. Do they have traffic cones in Spain? Okay. Yeah? Good. You're up. Okay. So, the challenge is, right, you pick a young person, or I would, I would get the young person to pick a student, but they can't see you, so... You pick a young person, All right? And there's going to be a obstacle course. So the first part of the obstacle course is around the human traffic cones. You get to Juan Carlos. You do a full lap, <laughs> Juan Carlos, and you go through here. Clear some space. I'm sure, I tidy up this morning. Then whew, up here. Okay. Did you? By the way, I emailed the risk assessment to this uh, for this to you. Did you get it? Yeah, good. Okay, along here. Down onto the floor. Uh, tunnel. There's a tunnel somewhere. This is the most I'm moved about. Jill, Jill, I don't think we need to go to the gym this afternoon. Okay, through the tunnel. I'm not going to demonstrate that. And then, and then, 
maybe. Uh, okay, through here. If I give you this parachute. There you go. Hold that. Underneath the, underneath the parachute. Back out. Back around, Jono. And back over here. Does that all make sense? No. Yeah. 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 So, whew, okay. I'm going to have a sit down for a minute. Uh, so, you have to guide, you have to guide the children. Children, you have to listen to these guys so that you don't fall over or break anything. Okay? Esther, you're up first. You ready? Go around both of them? Yeah, round one, Carlos. A full 360. Then up around. Through the tunnel, under the parachute, and then back over here. Okay. Okay. Esther. Go! <laughs> Okay, Lauren, you start now. Ben, do you know left and right? Oh, good. <laughs> Traffic code, you doing a sterling job. Okay, Ben, you go now. You've got an extra obstacle in your way here. Come on, Ben, it's nearly time for dropping. Esther's got a better, better sense of direction when she's got a blindfold on. I don't think I'd have made it free. <laughs> Which is exactly why I didn't go through. They won't have to call the fire brigade to cut me out.
Go on, Ben. Nearly there. Well done, Ben. Right. Where's he gone? Ben, was that easy? No. Why was it not easy? Because you couldn't see. So, did you, did you trust the Cape and Ray guys? Because you had to. Because otherwise, you wouldn't have made it around the course. And mo I think everyone, everyone made it around without any injuries. Did lose a picture off the wall, but that's collateral. Okay, <laughs> I want to uh, I want to talk about uh, a guy in the Bible called Abraham. Now God made a lot of promises to him, um, and God told Abraham made made promises and told Abraham to listen and to trust him. Uh, there's a verse right at the start of the Bible in Genesis 12 which says, "I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you." And I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. He tells Abraham, who is actually not called Abraham at this point, but we'll call him Abraham to save confusion. Um, he tells Abraham to leave all of his belongings, to leave his country, um, and to go. And God promised Abraham and his wife a son. And he said to him that Abraham would be the father of many nations. Now, at this point, Abraham was 75 years old, and his wife was 65 um, so, quite old, um, older than, nope, uh, he's quite old, <laughs> backed out of that one just in time, <laughs> but needless to say, 70, 65 year old women don't usually have children, um, but God had promised him this son, and, and Abraham waited, and he trusted, and he waited, and he trusted, and he waited and he trusted and he waited for 25 years, but then he started to doubt God. He, uh, he asked God why God had still not given him any children. Now, Abraham didn't get that at this point. Put your faith in God. Remember that God's in charge and he will look after you. Abraham had forgotten that. So what God did after Abraham had asked why have you not given me any children, God? He took him outside and he said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. So, God says to Abraham, Look up at the stars, count the stars, and that's how many children you'll have, if indeed you can count the stars. Now, is anyone good at, anyone good at science? Anyone good at astronomy or astrology? I never remember which, which one's Russell, Russell Grant. And which one's Patrick Moore? The one with the stars, anyway. Ben, how many stars do you think there are in the universe? Over a million is correct. Lauren, how many stars do you think there are in the universe? It's more than a million. I give that's a thousand. A thousand million. Well, I'll tell you what, in the Milky Way, according to scientists, at their best guess, there are 300 billion stars. And in the entire universe, there are 70 billion trillion stars, which is a seven with 21 zeros after it. That's quite a lot. Best guess in 2011 about the number of people that have ever been born ever Ben, how many people do you think have ever been born ever in the world? Not quite. It's uh, 107 billion, 602 million, 707,791-ish. That was, so that was, that was the best guess in 2011. So if... So if there are 107, 107,602,707,791 people in the, in the, that have ever been born in the world, and there are 70 billion trillion stars in the sky, then Abraham has still got quite a long way to go. Now, 
Abraham. Now, Abraham, do you, think, do you think when Abraham looked up at the sky, he could see all of the stars? Probably not. Okay? We can't. We look up at the sky, maybe we can see a thousand, maybe we can see a million. But just like the iceberg, we can only see the tip of the iceberg, Abraham probably couldn't see all of the stars. He couldn't count them. So it was hard to understand what God was saying to him. So he had to trust God because he couldn't see. Just like you guys had to trust the Cape May students because you couldn't see where you were going. He couldn't see all of the stars in the sky, so he had to put his faith in God. Now, God made Abraham another promise, which was, as well as saying Abraham will be the father of many nations, he said that kings will come from you. Now, what did God mean by that? We'll find out in a minute. Now, at this point, Abraham was 100 years old, and his wife was 90 years old, which is definitely older than everyone in this room I can say with confidence not put together but individually um, so he, he was 100 years old, he's 90, God still promised him a son he still didn't really have the faith that God wanted him to have so basically what he did, you can read about it in Genesis chapter 16, I won't go into any more detail but he had a, he had a baby with somebody else because Abraham thought I'll do it my way. I can't be bothered waiting for God anymore. It was a bit like the Titanic. He ignored all of the advice. But unlike the Titanic, which ended in disaster, God always keeps his promises. So even when, we, even when God tells us to trust him and we decide that we're going to go our own way, God always tries to pull us back on track. <coughs> Why does he do this? Because... If you put your faith in God, and you remember that he's in charge, then he will look after us. So, God reassured Abraham of his promise, and one year later, he had a son called Isaac. And this is where we work out what God meant when he said, kings will come from you. Because Isaac was the son of Abraham, and then, and I won't go through the entire list, or any of it. Uh, but 41 generations later, a baby was born called Jesus. So, it's interesting to see that actually, God chose a guy who messed things up. God chose a guy who sometimes didn't trust him. He chose that guy to be part of Jesus' family tree. And we're, we're a bit like that as well. Um, I think we, we mess up sometimes, but that doesn't mean that God can't use us in ways that he wants if we trust him. So, and there were a lot of people in Jesus' family tree who messed things up, but God still used them anyway. So, God makes promises. People try to go their own way, but God always keeps promises, and God always tries to pull you back on track. God tells us to trust him, because it's the best thing for us. Now, I don't know whether, maybe so at some point this week, Ben, have you, have you argued with your mum at some point this week? Yeah. And has, has, anyone, said, has anyone said something unkind to, to one of their friends, maybe? Yeah. I mean, I know I, know I do. I, I, I get angry, I say things, I do things, and afterwards it feels like a disaster, like the Titanic. But Jesus tells us to treat other people the way that we would like to be treated. That's the advice that he's given us. So I know that because I put my faith in God, even though sometimes I don't always act like it, and because I know that he's in charge, even though sometimes I don't want him to be, I know that he's always there for me, even when I mess up, because that is non-negotiable. God makes big promises, but God always keeps those promises. Now, I want to show you, there's another Bible verse here. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Now, I've never seen God. I don't know what he looks like. In the same way that the crew of the Titanic didn't see most of the iceberg. 
The crew of the Titanic put their faith in that boat because there was a promise by the people that built it that it was unsinkable. That promise turned out not to be true, which is why the Titanic is currently on the bottom of the sea. But God is different. God always keeps his promises. And sometimes we'd have to, we have to wait a little bit longer than we'd like to. God always answers our prayers, but sometimes not in the way that we want him to. But if you put your faith in God and remember that he is in charge, he will always look after us. And that's me for today. Forgot some more songs? Good, good.